Check, check. Check, one, two. Sound check. Oh, there we go. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. Woo. Woo. As you can see, there's a few goodies up here on the table. I wonder what that might be for. Kids, you know what Sunday is today? Father's Day. Father's Day. Okay. All right. So, just before I hand over to Rhys, can I just get the video up, uh, Tim? Why do the chicken coops only have two doors? Because if they had four, it would be chicken sedans. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you call a laughing motorcycle? A Yamaha. <laughs> a Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the greatest babysitter mentioned in the Bible? David. He rocked Goliath to sleep. At what time of day was Adam created? A little before Eve. Get out of here. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. <laughs> All right, what do you call a fish with two knees? A two-knee fish. Two knee? <laughs> I know, it took me a little long. I, late. A cop just knocked on my door and told me that my dogs were chasing people on bikes. My dogs don't even own bikes. <laughs> Did you know the first french fries weren't actually cooked in France? They were cooked in Greece. I tried to eat a clock the other day. It was really time consuming. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Who was the smallest person in the Bible? Ne <laughs> Nehemiah. <laughs> Need an ark? I know a guy. <laughs> How does Moses start his morning? Anybody? He brews a pot of coffee. <laughs> nice. Can February March? No, but April May. <laughs> Who was the greatest comedian in the Bible? Samson. He brought the house down. <laughs> yeah. Those are awful. Awfully good. Just like what I grew up with. Oh, I could do this all day. What do, you, what do you call a man with a spade in his head? What do you call a man without a spade in his head? <laughs> Douglas. Need an ark? What do you call a man with no shins? Tony.
Morning, Tony. <laughs> you, you can see me afterwards. It's all good. Oh, dear. Oh. oh, very good. All right, morning, everybody. Morning. Look, uh, good games are fast games, so we've, there's, there's a truckload on the meeting leave this morning, so we'll, we'll crack into it. Celebration. It is the first Sunday of the September. Someone's excited. Birthdays. Who had a birthday? In, who will have a birthday in September? I know of at least one. I heard about a party with Darth Vader yesterday. Oh. Sounded pretty exciting. Who else? Who else? Who wants to run? Do you want to run around for me? Do you want, do you want to run around, run around for me? Or no? You can. Everyone standing up gets a treat. Go. <laughs> Happy birthday. Beautiful. Very nice. How are we doing? Oh, he's getting around. Nicely done. One more there. Any more? One more over there. Great. All right, we're getting back into spring now. Spring weddings. Who got married in September? Who got married? Oh, oh. Someone stood up faster than the other one. That's suspicious. <laughs> All right. Okay, can you take something down? To oh, you got one for him? Cool. Okay. You choose what you want. All right. Mr. Stephen O.P., how many years have you been married? Or will you have been married this year? Because I know that Sarah knows how long you've been married. And I'm not sure that you do, quite frankly. <laughs> 19. Well done. <laughs> Nicely done. And a birthday's anniversary. Blessings. Who's got something they want to share with the family this morning that's been going on, that God's been doing in their lives? I have for you a not quite expired peanut slab <laughs> and a few black currant K bars and fill bits, bits and pieces. They're pretty good, I tell you. I had, a, I, had a, I had one of the peanut slabs for breakfast. So, um, Alison, you got something? Yeah, come on down. Come on down. Um, as some of you know, I've had, been having trouble with my eyes, and um, it's ongoing for years, but it's got, uh, got worse. And um, at the beginning of the month, it's, um, the eye specialist had said, you know, that's been happening, come in and see me, so which is easier said than done. But I went to work on the Monday, this is the second, third of, third of August, and it was really bothering me. So at lunchtime, I rang the eye specialist and, and said, and the lady there, she said, oh, we have an appointment, we have a cancellation this afternoon at 3.15. So off I went, and um, they did scans and things. And he said, oh, there was a little membrane in the back of the eye. He said, that shouldn't be there. So, but he sent me off to the retinal um, specialist, whom I've seen in the past, and... That was Monday. Tuesday morning, the um, nurse from the retinal specialist phoned me at quarter past nine in the morning and said, um, "We've got the uh, we've got the, the uh, what do you call it from the from the from the airport, but, um, anyway." And she said, "So we've got an appointment for you this Thursday at three fifteen. Two days later." And looking at possibly um, surgery the following Monday. Um, so two specialist appointments, just like that. How often can you get a specialist appointment? <laughs> and then within two weeks, uh, so I saw the um, specialist on the Thursday and uh, it needed laser surgery. So he sent me back to the first specialist who has a laser in his office, in his um, rooms. And the laser was done two weeks later. That's cool. That's awesome. Anybody else? Chris Hudson had a very special birthday. 80. <laughs> no, 
Not that, not that Chris wants a big deal made of the fact that it was her 80th birthday this week. No, okay. We won't, we won't overplay it. Happy birthday, Chris. <laughs> Achievements. Anyone got anything that's happened that they want to share? Any cool stuff that's been going on? Oh, Elisha's got one. I finished rugby and we got an award for doing the season of under nine rugby tackle. Nice. Future All Blacks in waiting. Right, do you want to, do you want, shall I give you one of those? Oh, you get one later, okay. Josiah? Oh, I, I can hold it for you if you want, while you talk. Oh, oh, this one. Okay, I'll hold this. Can you talk with this lollipop in your mouth? Can you take it out? <laughs> he got, uh, Josiah had his first season of rugby, uh, under six. He was supposed to be in a nursery grade, but he got put up to an under six team and ripper rugby. So he had his first great, uh, season and they gave him a medal engraved and everything. Hey, buddy. Cool. So that's awesome. Well done. Name yeah. There you go. I play um, indoor bowls for Salvation Army with Clay in Wellington and the guitar of Fold Rapid. So we joined up with Wellington and in Wellington we play an interclub. So we play other clubs around the Wellington area and last Wednesday we played Champion Champion Fours and our club won it. Whee! Look at that. My wife just made a comment to me earlier, <coughs> as she often does. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the flowers. Yeah. They were lovely. You're um, I suffer from hay fever, so I really thank you for the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can honestly say, uh, I've ne never seen so many flowers in one place. They just kept coming from Christchurch, from all over the place, however. Um, my wife's comment was, we've been coming to this place for 59 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had this dis disreputable group of people come and visit us on Friday, <laughs> where, we, where we had what was sort of, sort of a Christmas party, sort of a Christmas party. Um, and then on the Saturday, our family took us out for lunch and we're still trying to recover. <laughs> so if we're very quiet and subdued today, that's the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Very cool. 59 years. So that means Chris came in when she was 21. Crikey. Interesting. So it's, that's what I do. Stories. Hey, that's cool. All right. I think that's us, and we are into Mr. Simi. Awesome. Please stand. Um, as we sing, Days of Elijah. Now, before we get into singing, I would like to first of all apologize for those of you that were at the go-kart yesterday. I didn't mean to run the red light. <laughs> so on behalf of the winning team, Phil and uh, Jeff, we'd just like to apologize for that. Sorry for going too fast for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I want us to do for, before we get to sing, I, I want us to uh, do a bit of participation. So I'll go. Whoa, oh, oh. Let's try that again. Here we go. Seven. 
behold, he comes riding on the clouds. Yes, Lord, that's our prayer. We love you and we thank you. Have your way in us today, Lord. Amen. Hey, Simi, don't go anywhere. But I feel like everyone needs a little bit of exercise. And I saw Catherine and Natalie down the back doing the actions for that. So I think we need to do the chorus a couple of times so that we can kind of warm up. Yes. Oh, Natalie right? and Catherine, do you want to come up and do the actions? Yeah, what do you think? And whoever else knows it. Natalie, where are you? Natalie, come do the actions with Catherine. Here we go. Here we go, behold he comes, behold he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, and your voice, it's a year of jubilee, out of Zion's hill, salvation comes, behold he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the Please be seated. Soul praise. Soul praise. Yeah, yeah,
So since it's Father's Day, Father Sunday, I've got a couple of games uh, to be played. And the first one, I will ask for six fathers, six dads, volunteers, please. Find a partner. And what I want you guys to do is have one hand behind your back. Which one? Anyone? You choose between your partner and yourself. And what I'm going to get you guys to do is work with each other to wrap up this box. One handed. All right? Oh, yeah, put them up on the platform. Well, hold on, we'll, we'll move you guys up. We'll start on the stage. Uh, All right. No, that's already been chopped up. So, you have got two minutes. Two minutes to... To wrap up this box, and I will get who? Jess. You can be the judge. You will choose. After two minutes, you will come up and inspect the boxes, and you get to choose whose box was wrapped up nicely. All right, are we ready? So, the guys on that group, on that row, you will be cheering for Reese and his team, and the middle group, Barry and his team. And this group, Tony and his team, all right? Are we ready? Wait, wait. Your two minutes starts now. Barry, hidden talents, gift wrapping. No, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, oh, Graham. That's looking quite promising. He put, he put money with his tissues. Well, I must admit, I was quite impressed with Barry and Stu, how they, how they did it. He used his brain and used his legs to hold the sellotape. That you didn't stipulate they couldn't use any other body part. Um, but I'm a little worried because Nathan can't even make it look that pretty with two hands. <laughs> So I'm a bit worried, boys. You need to go do something manly. <laughs> um, I, do, I do like how you work together as a team, Graham and Tony. Well done. Uh, 
you guys, it's a worry. I'm a little bit worried. Who's received a present with the tape dispenser still on it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I need some help. This is way too hard. So I'm going to point to the team, and you've got to cheer the loudest for the one you want, okay? Right, so this team here. definitely this team. Well done. Well done. Okay. As winners, you get to share that with oh. yourself. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One last game. One last game. Can I get um, three groups? So dad and kids. So can I have one group there where Reese's is? One group here and the other group here, okay? So what we're gonna do, I will give you two minutes. We'll give you a packet of balloon each. And in two minutes, I want you to build a tower. I'll give you a cellar tape as well. Blow up the balloon and tape them together and see who has got the tallest balloon tower. Okay? So we've got one cellar tape there, one cellar tape here. All right, which one of you gents has stolen the cellar tape? <laughs> All right, so kids, you can bring your father up, bring your dads up. Oh, there we go. There's got one group here on the green balloon. Yellow balloon. Other dads can join in as well. And the kids. And the other one is the orange balloon. Ooh. Have you got a group on that side? Come on, June. Come, Shoe. Yeah. Hey. Hey, yeah, could find the figures as well. On that side, we've got a group on that side as well. All right, are we ready? Two minutes, should be freestanding, yes. Standing on its own, and three, two, one, go, go.
Okay. Can I get Graham? Graham Tong be the judge for this one. Yes, freestanding. Oh, that one there is freestanding. Oh, true, yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Should we go like the last one? What about the yellow? Yellow balloon. The green balloon. Okay. The orange balloon. Ooh. So I might give it to the orange team. Yeah. Here you go, orange team. There's your prize. Awesome. Vanessa. Islandish. Now it is time for Islandish. We sponsor 18 kids in Tonga, one kid in Fiji, one kindergarten in, in Tonga, and we support other programs as well. If you have any spare change, please hold it up in the air and the kids will come around and collect it. Can all the kids please come up the front? Let us pray. Father God, I just um, thank you for this money that we've received for the kids in Fiji and Tonga, that you bless the kindergarten and the kids that we sponsor, um, that they just um, know your love and know our love for them from Tawa. And um, I thank you for all that you're doing in their lives. Amen. Awesome. <clears throat> um, so I've been asked to share uh, my testimony. <laughs> ooh, 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 okay. On the privilege of uh, fatherhood. Um, growing up, as some of you know, um, I lost my, my own dad uh, when I was eight years old. From then on, I did not really have a solid father figure in my life. I was blessed, however, 
with, uh, with many men and women who stepped up and took care of various father roles in my life. I became a dad in 2011. Although this did not look like the way that I always thought it would, due to circumstances, I was not able to play more role as a father. It was 2015 when Iferemi was born, and in that moment, I was now a dad to two boys. While this was an extremely exciting time, it did make me realize what I was missing with Ezekiel, who was still not present in our lives. Eight months after Ephraim was born, I headed home to Fiji and brought Ezekiel over to live with us. Now this, this brought mixed feelings of excitement and joy, but also nervous as it was a very new relationship and he was already four and a half years old. For me, I see fatherhood as a blessing, but also recognize the responsibility that it comes with. It makes me understand the saying, God loves his children. God loves me as his son in a whole new level. I know that I don't always do things that deserves God's love, but he always still loves me. And when I see my kids make mistakes, I can help but still love them. Letting my kids know that I am always here and will always love them is one thing that I want them to know and feel. And I also want them to know this about God. Now, for those of you uh, that know me, I am not an overtly serious person. I love to have fun and joke around. Having two boys has allowed me to have fun and joke around with them. But it has helped me as well to know when to rein it in. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I want my boys to grow up not only knowing God, but also knowing how to be good husbands and fathers for when it is their turn. I know that a large amount of this comes from my demonstrations of these things. Now, when I got married, not only was I blessed with my beautiful wife, but God provided through her a father figure for me through her dad. Um, dad not only welcomed me as a son-in-law, but as a son. But he also demonstrated how a father should be, how a father loves, cares, protects, and is there for his family. Um, so I would like to take this time just to honor you, Dad, uh, for accepting me and showing me how to be a father to my kids, to your grandkids. Um, yeah. I would like to give back God the glory and the honor to be his alone. Amen. Um, now it's time for offering. Ooh, what a transition.
prayers offerings. Father, we pray that you would take them and use them um, and just bless those who are giving in your name. Amen. Right, well, guess what, kids? You've got an exciting morning planned by our youth. So um, I have had a helper help me hide the treasure chest. I don't know where it is. Can you guys help me find it? Where's the treasure chest? Maybe my helper could come up here and help me help the kids find it. Oh, you're all cold. Getting warm. Just be gentle and careful around the front. Who's hot? Ah, good work, Summer. All right, so it's really exciting what we're doing. Who wants to know what we're doing this morning? Oh, well, open it up, Elisha. What does it say, James? Shh. Oh, we can't tell you. See you later. Let's go, guys. Yes, good. Um, you have those moments where, like in the fun and the chaos, there's just a real um, God moment. And for me this morning, um, I, I, I believe it was when Phil was playing before the service and he played that tune. If you can just start playing, Phil. Um, he leadeth me, he leadeth me. And I just thought about it and I thought, man, that's, a, that's just like, it takes me back. Like, you know those songs that, that just have that ability to take you back to that moment of intimacy with God. It's not for, for some of you, you might not even know this tune, and this might be a new tune for you, but for me, there's the song, there's, there's other songs that I hear. It might be new, it might be old, it, but it, what it reminds me of, the connection I have with the Father. And in and, and Father's Day, Yes, we want to honor dads here, but we also want to see that for each of us, it's about us connecting with Father God. And so I just want us to take a moment. This, this wasn't planned, you know, Phil didn't again. Oh, well, it was planned by the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't planned by us. And um, Paul's just going to put the words up to the chorus. Joy, can I get you to come and help me, please? Maybe if we just have verse one and we'll sing it. We'll just, and for those of you who know it, sing along with us. Uh, if you don't, just, just take this moment just to reflect and just to allow God to do something in this moment. It's not about the words. It's not about the music. It's about God, okay? But the words have power. Thank you, Joy. From verse one.
yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on in, in the life of this family at the moment. Um, and we need to know that. We need to know that truth for ourselves that he leads us. Oh, it's good. See, for me, church isn't about coming and just doing this every week. Church about, for me, is the connection that I have with God. And the reason why I love to come and do this, and the reason why I gave up being a mechanic, a job that I loved to do, was because I wanted people to experience the same connection I have had with Father God. into an experience in a way that is tangible. You know, I remember when we first arrived here, um, you know, I learned about Sozo prayer ministry and I thought, well, I don't know much about this. Heather was telling me about it and she said, well, why don't you go along? Um, have one and see, see what it's all about. So I said, oh, yeah, that, you know, so I met with Toby and we talked, talked about what it was and, I went and I went and did it, and I connected with with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in a way that I I had experienced before, but never in quite in that way. And I remember thinking, this is why I want I want other people to experience this, because as we we sat and as we talked about what it was, he was sharing with me that there was, there was a lady, an elderly lady that had came in um, and that had never experienced anything of God, like had been to church faithfully all her life. Um, and she came in and she, she had this connection with God. And she says, I now understand the words that are in this book. I now understand what God is talking about, that he wants to have a, re- a personal relationship with us. And I can't quite remember uh, when Toby was telling me just quite how old, I think she was in her 70s or something, and she said, it finally makes sense. And I remember because Toby said it was just like, she just like was leaping, you know, you, you, you know the, the, the man who gets healed and he's leaping, jumping and praising the Lord as he leaves. It was like that, that he was, she was leaping and jumping and praising the Lord as she went. And folks, for me, that's why we come and do what we do. It's not, it's not so that we get a mug. It's not so that we can light a candle. It's not so that we can give money. It's so that we can connect with God. And if we can't do that, then we're better to stay home. It's not just because this is what we do. Sorry, that was a bit of a side tangent. But I really feel that this morning that I just, you know, as those were, as as Phil was playing at the start of the meeting, I was just like, wow, you know, those just there's some songs that just really hit you. And why do they hit you? Because you've got a connection to God through those songs. It's powerful. There's one I'm listening to at the moment. Uh, it's a bit more. It's a bit more rocky than that one. Um, it's called Rattle, and it's by a church in America called Elevation Worship, and it's got a couple of different guitar parts and stuff. And it just. But the words in it, it's talking about the dry bones, and are talking about the bones of a live stream. We're talking about that this morning. Um, it's a good song. So there's songs that that are good. Because they connect us to God. So last week, last week, if you weren't here, um, you need to know that we have on uh, the Tower Salvation Army website, we have um, the services from previous weeks loaded up there so that you can watch them, go back and watch them. If you weren't here last week or you didn't watch online, get along there, see semi-sermon. It was a good sermon. 
good? No, it was great. It was great. It was, it was really good, mate. It's the best I've heard you speak. And I, I wanted to, uh, Jess says, oh, you should text him. And uh, I, I thought about it when I got to the end of the week. I thought, why didn't I do it? Because I want to publicly honor you today. Um, because today you shared vulnerably of your relationship with your dad, who's here this morning. And I think um, that, Dad, you, you must feel really proud of your son, the, the, the development and the journey that you've seen him on. So, so awesome. So if you didn't see it, uh, weren't here or weren't part of it, he was talking about overcoming disappointment. And man, didn't we need that word? You know, Sunday after the meeting, I got a message from some, one of, the, uh, one of uh, the members in this church said, I want to catch up with you for a pastoral care. There's just something out of Simi's me- message that I just need to share with you and get you to pray with me on. And, and, um, and then uh, multiple things have happened this week where we've needed to see overcoming disappointment. And he said to overcome disappointment, the word was to let go, to look up, look ahead and get to work. You know, there's a point in which we've actually got to just get on with things and see that God is in it and look for where God is and to follow where he is at. Uh, So this morning, and I'm hoping not to be too long, even though I've already started reasonably long, I need to blow my nose. But this morning, I want to tell the story uh, of Elijah and Elisha. This might be a story, if you've been in the church as long as some have, you you might have heard this message or a similar message many times on these passages, or you you might not have. Um, I know for me that I know a lot about Elijah and Elisha because we, um, obviously, because we called our son Elisha, uh, but we really, uh, the story of the double portion, Elijah passes on. Uh, the double portion to Elijah passes it on to Elijah, Elisha, I'm going to get it muddled, but um, has been quite um, evident in our family that that is the desire, that's, that's the strong desire from my dad, that he would pass on to the next generation a double portion of that which he's encountered. So the story, uh, the title of this message is, What Are You Passing On? And I just want to tell the story of Elijah and Elisha. Because if you don't know, and if you're taking notes, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 19 to 21, Elijah the prophet goes to uh, uh, Elisha, and here he is plowing the fields. And he says to him, hey, Elisha, he, well, he doesn't say to him. He just goes up to him, and he has a cloak, which they call the mantle. And he goes and he puts that cloak, the mantle, on Elisha. And this was a symbol that he was going to be his successor. This was a symbol that he was wanting to take him with him and to mold him and to shape him. And Elisha says, well, can I just first say goodbye to my parents, to my mum and dad and to my family? And he, he, he basically goes, well, yeah, whatever you gotta do, you just do what you gotta do. And here Elisha goes and he goes and he gets uh, his, his animals, he slaughters his animals, he grabs the plow and he burns the plow and cooks the meat on the plow, on the wood that he's, on the fire that he's made. And the symbol of this is that Elisha left everything to go and follow the man of God. And, and in our, in, in through the, Bible, the story of the Bible, we have this reoccurring theme that people left this, their old ways, their old life to follow Christ and to follow God. And so here, same for Elisha and Elijah. Elisha kills and makes this and goes and follows the man of God. And now during this time, uh, Elijah, no doubt, is taking him and he's, and he's showing him how to be a prophet. He's training him. Because you don't just wake up one day being a prophet. And in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 18, we have the story of Elijah being taken up in the whirlwind. If you don't know these stories, please go and read them. They're great stories. Uh, and, and Elijah is, uh, Elisha says, I want a double portion. Now, double portion in this, this context is saying, I want what is rightfully mine as your ear, right? The firstborn son is the ear. And so he says, I want what's, what, uh, that, that inheritance that is mine. And, he, and Elijah says to him, well, if you see me go, then you'll get it. And so Elisha follows Elijah everywhere he goes. 
waiting for the moment. And Elijah gets taken up in the whirlwind and his cloak comes floating down. His mantle comes and it sits in front of Elisha and Elisha picks it up and he strikes the ground and says, now where is the God of Elijah? And the waters of the Jordan part and he goes through it. Now, he becomes a, a, a great prophet. You, read in, you can read it in 2 Kings uh, from chapter two onwards. He, I have been through it because I thought, uh, it's interesting that he asked for a double portion. Would there be double the stories of what he has done, the, the um, supernatural things that, that God does through him? Would there be double? And yes, there is. You can go through, and I've marked it in my Bible, and I've got little pencil marks in my Bible of as I counted the, the stories of Elijah, and then I go and count through the stories of Elisha. And there was double. But then we have this account of Elijah as, uh, Elisha, as we go along in 2 Kings, and I want you to turn in your Bibles if you've got them, to 2 Kings chapter 13. So we have this picture of Elijah coming, choosing a successor in Elisha, and then them journeying together, and then Elijah being taken off, and Elisha continuing on that mission. And then we come to this in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 20. It says this, Elisha died and was buried. Elisha died and was buried. Now, I don't know if many of you have read this passage, but if you haven't, this is insightful to you, I hope. Now Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once, while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders, so they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. Have you ever thought about that? Here we have two men, they're going and doing the burial thing, and all of a sudden they hear, see raiders in a distance. And they think, now we're going to get out of here. So what they do is they just look for the nearest tomb that's open and they throw the body in and they scamper off. And here this body, I don't know if you, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Uh, and this body rolls <laughs> and it hits the bones of Elisha and the person comes back to life. See, Elijah was willing to pass on that which God had given him. Elisha, however, didn't ever have a successor. Now, we don't have an answer as to why, and we don't, we don't have any reason as to why. But I want to say to you that today, there's something that we can learn in this is what are we passing on? Are we being like Elijah, and are we looking for people to pass on the anointing, to pass on what God has done in our lives? Or are we being like Elisha, who has experienced just amazing things in God, and then kept them to themselves. To the point where there was such an anointing on his physical body that when something dead touched his body, it came back to life. Now we see this in, in the New Testament where, where people would pray for handkerchiefs and they would, you know, uh, who was it, Peter? Was it Peter? When they prayed pray for a handkerchief? Yeah, they got Peter to pray for that. Or was it Paul? I can't quite remember. It'll be there somewhere. One of those godly men. And they used the handkerchief and it would heal people. This, this anointing that was on this man stayed in his bones. So what are we passing on? Do we want to be like Elijah and to find people who we can pass the things of God onto? Or do we want to be like Elisha and hold it to ourselves? Examples of this is folks, um, you know, in the church, we so often, we experience things of God, but do we tell them to our kids? Folks, I wanna challenge you today, if you've got grandkids, have you shared with them the things of God? 
that God has done in your life. Because you know that's significant. I honor my grandparents. I honor my grandparents because I love them to bits. Those who are still with uh, my nana who's still with us and those who have gone. But one thing I can say is that I never heard what God had done in their life from them as a grandchild. And when I sat with my grandfather as he was um, on his last few days, I just thanked him for being a godly influence on my life. But do you know, if he had have just shared with me what God had done, what impact that would have had in my life. Because I already saw the example that he was setting me. But it was that which we can share The Bible tells us that we should tell the generations and the next generations and the generations so that they would know God. But do we do it? What are we passing on? Are we being spiritual parents today? Because I don't want us just to focus on dads because otherwise all the women in the room switch off and think, oh, it's just about dads today. (laughs) But I want us as spiritual parents to ask ourselves the question, what are we passing on? What are we passing on? Are we looking for people to, to disciple? You know, we have, a, we have a, a strong, I have personally have a strong bent because I believe that that was the lifestyle of Jesus, that he trained disciples. And so if he's our person that we should be replicating, then we should be doing the same thing that we should be discipling. And we have that around this place, that we want to be disciples. We want to be wholehearted followers and students of Jesus Christ in training daily to obey Him and live by the power of His Spirit. We want to be people, men and women, who pass on to the next generation the things of God. You know, I don't want my kids to think to grow up thinking that I spent too much doing church and not being the church. I stand as, as a, a person of my generation looking around for my peers, other officers' kids, other, other uh, pastors' kids, other kids in general, and look at the gaps Because sometimes we're too busy doing church and not being the church. You know, I don't say this to condemn because I hope that, you know, I'm still in that process with my kids. I do this to challenge because if we're breathing today, it's not too late. If we're breathing today, it's not too late. We still can choose. There's a clip from a movie called Facing the Giants. We're going to watch it in a moment. It's a great clip. If you haven't seen the movie, it's a bit cheesy. It's a Christian movie. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what we do as, as Christians to make really cheesy movies, but sometimes it just happens that way. So they're slowly getting better, but, um, but, but it, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's, 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 it's a good, wholesome movie. Um, and there's a coach who's about to talk to, to his team and get his team to do a drill. And I just want us to look because um, I believe that as fathers as spiritual parents here today, uh, we can learn something by the example that this guy sets. Thanks, Paul. So, coach, how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. Certain form you do it 
God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Huh? Can I count on you? Yes. Huh? What is it, Jerry? I want to say so. Here we have the coach. You know, at first, he's just encouraging him. He's walking alongside him, and he's encouraging him. But at the moment in which he can see that it's just getting a little bit too tough, he's willing to get down to his level. He's willing to be there and to keep encouraging and encouraging. You know, um, when have you had people in your life that have fallen away from the faith? And you've encouraged and you've encouraged, but as soon as they've fallen away, you've thought, oh, well, now my job is just to pray for them. You know, we think it's okay because it's sports. You know, it might be because they're good at sports that, that will keep encouraging them to fulfill that dream, but what about their faith? What about the knowledge that you have of what God's done in your life that you could share with them and encourage them and to keep cheering them on don't give up don't give up don't give up keep just encouraging them keep speaking truth into their lives you know I hope I'd be a father figure like that that when it's getting really really tough I'll be telling my kids don't give up don't give up. God is faithful. He leads us. Keep going. Although we don't understand. What's, uh, what's the words of the second verse? Paul, can you put it up for the He Leadeth Me, the second verse that we sung? Seems... Uh, Sometimes mid the scene, scenes of deepest gloom or where Eden's bowers bloom. By water still or troubled sea, by his hand he leadeth me. You know, it's, what's easiest to do is when it's really stormy sea. That's really easy to do it then. I don't know why, but we can. We can really encourage when times are really tough. But it's in the good times to share the goodness of God. So what are we passing on? Are we being like Elijah, looking for those? It might be our physical children. It might be our physical grandchildren. It might be our spiritual kids. It might be our spiritual grandkids. By spiritual, I mean anyone that didn't, you know, aren't your biological family. Because you know we're all family here. If we're believers in Christ, we are all family. So do we look out for those and do we spur them on? When they might have a moment where they trip and fall, do we spur them on to keep going? When they just want to have a moment where they just want to pause because it's getting a bit tough, do we say, keep going, keep going? So we're gonna to sing together a song called More to Come. Team's gonna join me. And I believe that in this season that we're in, of the harvest season, don't forget we're still in harvest. We're still in the midst of harvest. That God is asking us today, Father's Day 2020, are we willing to be fathers who are going to go and who are going to call to our children, who are going to call to our grandkids to spur them on, to say, hey, keep going. Keep going. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. But in this moment, keep going. 
Or are we gonna be like Elisha that one day someone might throw some, something on the old bones and they'll come, it'll come back to life? I don't wanna think that I may drop the ball or drop the baton or whatever analogy you wanna see this morning that my kids have to go and fumble around to try and find it again. I wanna pass it on in a way that they will know, that they know, that they know that it's where it's come from and the family lineage that they live in and that they walk in. So let's pray. Father, this morning as we have time with you, God, I just pray that you continue to speak to our hearts. Father, you know what is going on for each person in this room right now. You know the faithfulness that is within this room. And Father God, I thank you for the faithfulness of the Tawa Salvation Army for, through its many years of service to this community. But God, I ask that there would be more to come, that we wouldn't look back and think our best days were behind us, but yet God, that your, our best days are before us. Father, we pray for the kids, the grandkids, no matter what age they are today, Father, that have walked away from you. Father, we pray for your divine wisdom on how to keep encouraging them, to show your love, to tell them the stories of your faithfulness. Father, that even when it might feel uncomfortable, even when it might feel hard, Father, that we will share of your goodness. that we would be willing to tell the stories of what you've done to testify to your goodness. So Father, as we reflect this morning during this song, I just pray that you would speak to us, speak clearly to our souls, speak clearly to our hearts. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you that there is more to come. Father, that we... can be the fathers, the men, the spiritual fathers, the men, women, the spiritual parents who you call us to be. To encourage. To spur on. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So, um, can someone grab the kids, please? Cool. Thank you. Um, our team, just stay here because we're going to play that one through just during this time. Um, so in our Father's Day service, we, we like to take an opportunity and um, to honour our dads. Uh, it might be our uh, physical dads or it might be our spiritual dads. Uh, might be a father figure who may not be a male, and that's okay. Um, and today what we have is we have a, a table here um, uh, that you can light a candle in remembrance of your dad if your dad has passed, um, of those uh, significant father figures in our lives. Um, I'm going to bring this over and put it in the middle. And I ask that as we come, because of social distancing and that, may take a bit longer than it usually does, but if we can just try and come in an orderly-ish fashion, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, but if we can come through this aisle here, and if we're grabbing a cup uh, um, to take to our fathers, please do that, and then head back this way. So if we can not come down this way, uh, that would just help with the flow. Um, even if you're coming from this side, come down the side and then go out through that way. And then we can just keep um, our distance. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to sing this song through. And as we do so, I just want you to come. And it might be to um, to honour your dad, to give them a hug. It might be that you see someone in this household, in this family, uh, who is a spiritual dad to you. And so you might want to give them some, a little something. Um, just remember social distancing. I'm, you know, try, if you want to hug, it's, it's up to you. But we advise against it. If you're in the same bubble, yes. If it's your dad. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, so, Father, we just thank you that we get to take this opportunity to honour our dads. Um, we just pray as we have this time, Father, that your spirit would continue to be here. Um, we thank you for the Father figures in our lives. The men and women who uh, have, have um, been that part in our life that we've needed. We thank you for being our Father God today. Just be here, be in our midst of uh, this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Yeah, so Father, we thank you for those Father figures in our lives. We thank you for this time that we're able to take out of our Sunday morning to come and to honour them. We thank you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing in this church family. We thank you for what you're doing in this community. And we thank you that there is more to come. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've got one more song to sing. I know we're getting on, but it's okay. Crown him with many crowns. We're going to stand. We're going to sing this as our benediction. Benediction. Hey, the Holy Spirit's really here. That's a benediction. The benediction this morning, we're going to sing together. Crown him with many crowns. I know. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to pick on a few dads out there to go and judge the pies because I forgot to do it <laughs> before the meeting. So while um, Mark is presenting the uh, Go Kart Challenge Awards, um, I would like Toby, can you go out and judge uh, uh, the pies with? Hmm. Let me see. Uh, Kenneth. This might be your first competition judging, yes? Could you go out with Toby and judge the pies there in the kitchen? They're under their categories, and all you've got to do is choose the best one out for each category, okay? Yeah? You don't, yeah, you've got to taste it. You can't just look at it. You don't have any allergies? Oh, good. Do we need three? Maybe three. Um... Hey, Sam, it's your first time too. Do you want to go judge the pies? Awesome. 
Awesome. Between the three of you, I need four winner, one winner from each category. Thank you. Mark. Okay. Um, hands up, who's a little bit bruised and sore and battered after last night? Yeah, same here. I'm starting to feel my age. I am a grandfather, of course, so, you know, yeah, I, I, and I, I, think, I think the young fella's going to call me grumps, but that's okay. Right, hey, um, we had a really good night last night. There were 25 men and women who participated in the Go-Kart Challenge uh, for the Linda Mills Memorial Go-Kart Challenge Cup, um, and... Paul, do you want to chuck the photo up on the wall, please? Um, so this particular um, series of racing has gone on for a few years now, but in the last couple of years, we've called it the Linda Mills Memorial, Trof uh, Memorial Go-Kart Challenge uh, in memory of Linda. Um, so this is the second year that we've had the trophy. Um, so the final event as part of this will be presenting the trophy. I have no idea who the winner is. I have no idea what the category is that Jeff has chosen for this award to go to. The recipient last year was Fee because she was the food champ because um, we had it catered and everything out at the, at the racetrack. So Fee won it last year. So no idea who it is this year. However, we're going to start off with some awards, um, just some recognition of some people who did some things on the night. Um, the first of those is the Best Babysitter Award. There are five recipients of this, and I'd ask them all to come up and, uh, or a representative, Molly, Vanessa, Izzy, Anna, and Brianna. They're all, well, they're all legal babysitters. That's good. I'm, I'm pleased to know that. So if I give you those, oh, uh, Jeff, you've got to come up and hand these out. Come on. So <laughs> while he's doing that, I'll tell you the next ones. <laughs> All right, we have a Kamikaze Award. The Kamikaze Award is for someone who really just went straight in there, hard out, and hit a pole. <laughs> um, and the one that I saw, there were probably others, but the one that I saw that did that the most was Jenny. So <laughs> I'll, pass, I'll pass this on to Jeff as well. And Jeff, Jeff can hand this out to Jenny. There you go. That's for the Kamikaze Award. Um, there is another award... Um, and I know that um, Daniel is right into uh, Winnie the Pooh, etc. We have a Tigger Award, a T I double G U -er Award for the bounciest driver. And apparently, this was Barry. I was told that every time Barry went round the corner at the far end, he would bounce around the track. No one else did that. So, so the Tigger Award, there you go, Jeff, goes to Barry for the bounciest driver. Now, he's not here, um, but. The person who had the most crashes, according to my watchful eyes out there, thanks to Sarah and Graham and a few others, went to Shane. So if we can have a representative of the Booth family come and collect this award for Shane. Not only that, we have an award for the first person to crash. And believe it or not, this actually happened in the warm-up laps, and there were only two of them, and that goes to Tony. Now, we did mention at the start of the race that there are three different colored lights. Green means go, orange means slow down, not like you would on the street, which is go faster to get through the lights, um, and red means, red means stop. Well, several people did not understand the orange light. Um, however, two notable mentions um, that we're presenting the Orange Light Naughty Award to, um, or for the Orange Light Award in particular, is Angela Hawkey and Brent Melhop. So if we can have a representative from the Hawkey family come and pick that up. And while you're there, Phil, stay for this one. This is the Naughty Award. This is for people who removed their seat belts before coming into the pits. That also goes to Angela and Brent. <laughs> okay, the Marital Bliss Award. This is for the couple that, although they raced on different teams, they still look, looked out for each other and didn't, didn't go crashing into each other. And that is to Reese and Sharon. <laughs> now... We have an award here for the best Nana driver. This is not because this particular driver was being a Nana on the track. It's actually she was the only Nana racing. Um, and she was also the best blocker. At one stage I hear she had five people blocked up behind her. And that goes to my darling wife, Glennis. <laughs> We're now going to move on to the fastest laps for each of the teams. Now, we had eight teams out there racing, and there were three per team. 
Um, at one stage, I haven't got an award for the f- person who retired first out of the racing, because that would go to Tony as well. Um, he got a little bit injured, so he was replaced by Sharon. Um, so there were actually 25 people racing, although only teams of three. So the fastest laps for the various teams, and I'll call the names out, um, and, and this was team, or oh, cart number three, the fastest lap went to Chris, and that was 24.46, I think, Ken, Kenneth, or Semi, you know who that is? Okay, cool. Fastest lap in team one, which was the team that had the Mel Hops and Angela, you'll never guess who won that one, Brent Melhop at 23.68, which was not the fastest time on the night. Whoa. Fastest in lap four, there was another Brent that came along with Sam. Who, who, there's another Brent came along. Brett, is it? Sorry, I've spelled it Brent. I will correct it after with a change to the certificate. Come and see me later. But if you can come and get this, 23.67 seconds. Oh, hang on to it. We'll, have, we'll do it afterwards. We'll, we'll change the name afterwards. All right, then we had the fastest lap in Team 11, which was the family of Booths, and that went to Shane with 2360. Was it Nick? Nick. Well, I've got Shane, so give it to Shane. (laughs) That's all right, okay, that's fine. I can rewrite it later for you if you want to. Um, Fastest lap in Team 2 with an amazing time of 2352, Stephen Opie. Fastest lap in Team 12 was me, but I'll just stick that here. Uh, fastest lap, Team 5, went to Barry, 23.36. Fastest lap in Team 6 went to Phil of 22.98. And that was the fastest time for the night. Okay, there's just there's about six to go. The third... Each of, the, each of the laps are added up and get an average, all right? So the next category is the fastest, the top three fastest average lap times overall. In third place is Team 11 with Nick, John, and Shane with an average lap time of 28.43 seconds. Second fastest average lap, lap time was to Team number one, which was the Mel Hops and Angela. So Phil, you might want to come and grab that one. And while you're there, stay there, because the fastest average lap time by all of the teams last night was 26.81 seconds. Team six, Phil, Jeff, and Semi. Come up, Semi. Come up. Okay, three to go before we find out who has won the trophy for this year. Third fastest on the track overall for the night with a time of 23.36 seconds is Barry Kirby, and these are pretty close. There's less than half a second between these three people. Second fastest on the track with a time of 23.12. Give it to yourself, Mr. Jeff Mills. And the fastest on the track, yes, and it wasn't Brent Melhop, yay! Okay, it went to Mr. Phil Hawkey, 22.98 seconds. So I'll change that to say, Brett, that's cool. And Jeff, do you want to say some words about the final award for today? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, hard to believe it's a year gone by already um, since the inaugural. Um, but uh, before I get into that, uh, there's something I just want to share with you guys, or, 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 or to you guys, but in front of everybody. Um, there's something you said just before, um, Mofo, um, about um, you want your you want your kids to see you being the church, now, um, not doing the church. Um, You guys don't need to worry about that. Um, You know, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, You know, you don't. You guys don't do church just on. You're you're not just a church for Sunday, a one day a week job. Yeah, you're a seven day a week. Um, And uh, you know, these guys. You know, like when Bird. it's just what I called her. I called her Bird. Um, 
when she passed, um, these guys had never done a funeral service before, and it never entered the equation that I would look anywhere else other than having these guys uh, officiate. And Linda wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Uh, and you guys did a fantastic job. And you supported us um, through that week and ever since. Um, and you guys are just awesome. So just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, down to the serious questions. Yeah. Now, um, I work as an engineer, and there's a few engineers here. Phil Hawkey, Phil Breesman, and a couple of others in the, in the, in the mix. Um, and, you know, we deal with, uh, you know, important stuff. <laughs> so, you know, we've got to come up with an engineer solutions. Um, and uh, so we're dealing with data and precision. And we collaborate with others. Now, um, I'll, just, um, I'll just define that a bit further. Can you hold that for a minute? Oh, here we go. I've got, to re I've got to read it myself. <laughs> Engineer, let's unpack that. Someone who does precision guesswork based on unreliable data from questionable sources. <laughs> right? So, yes, we are dealing with great engineering here. And with uh, give, uh, giving of this trophy. Um, <coughs> so, lots of hearsay, um, fake news, um, and uh, questionable data. <laughs> so, I think we've got a. I think we've got a clear winner because right from the get go last night, right, this one was in the mix. Okay, now we had to do a draw for the cards. Um, it was Barry. Barry was Barry took a. Barry was in that draw. I was in that draw. Andrea was in the draw. And I got card six, and card six just happened to be the first card. So. Well, you know, that's telling us something, isn't it? You know, and, and we won on the night, and we had the fastest driver. And second fastest driver. And, and the second fastest driver, and the fastest team overall. You know, wow, you know. There we go. Come up, fellas. Excellent. Way to go, Jeff. Well-deserved winners. Thank you very much. Awesome. That's great. Okay. Um, and before we hand over to someone to give us the results of the, of the pies, I'd just like to say one thing about this place. There's something different about Tawa than any other core that I've been in. And I'll leave it at that. You're quite right there, Mark. It's because we're family. Um, all right, if you made a pie, ladies, can you go into the kitchen and grab it, please? Try and all rush at once. Hmm? 
Um, can you grab mine? Um, just while they're doing that, <clears throat> this is how we're going to do morning tea, okay, under level two. We will move this table and you'll be served at the servery. The people serving it will have gloves and a mask on. And you need to, in the line, stand two or one metre? One metre apart, please. And you will be served um, a pie of your choice on a paper plate, okay? Um, and tell us what drink you want and come. Um, and you should be honky dory. All right. So I was a little bit disappointed, ladies. There's only a few pies here. They do look good. Yeah, they do look really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, the judges didn't have too much of a hard job because in three out of four categories, there was only one entry. So they won by default. So the most appealing pie goes to the apple pie. Well done, Caroline. Summer, can you bring the gift to gifts up? Oh, okay, Elisha. The biggest pie goes to the bana banoffee, is it? Banoffee pie. Well done, Izzy. The most delicious pie, this was the category that had two entries. So drum roll, please. Drum roll. Whose is it? Where's the other one? We're missing one. Oh, was it yours? Oh. Who didn't get their pie? Anyway, the most, the most delicious was the passion fruit and lemon. I'm guessing that's you. <laughs> well done. And the most unique pie, that goes to me because it's actually a cake. And it's the heaviest, sorry. It's actually che Chewbacca, is that how you say it? Chewbacca, because he, uh, Josiah had his Star Wars party yesterday, and that's the bottom tier, because I was like, we don't need it. So you can all eat it. Uh, so it fits in, my, in the category of unique pie. I don't know whose pie that is. Who bought that one? Oh, Helen. Oh, but that's good. That's fine, that's fine. You didn't win anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> Jenny won. Jenny won. All right. Uh, have we given out all the... Yes. Have we given out all the things? Did you get one? Oh, that's my one. Okay. All right. So we're going to go get those cut up and remember your social distancing as you line up for some morning tea slash lunch. Sorry. Just one thing. This is a list of everyone's personal bests for the night. So the fastest lap that everyone did and whatever lap they did it in... Oh, no, it doesn't say that, but the fastest lap, personal best, if you want to see what you did, come up and it's on the table here. 